हेलो एवरीवन आई एम निधि एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय चैनल अर्बन डायरीज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग दिस फ्री ग्रामर क्लासेस सीरीज एंड अप्रिशिएटिंग द हार्ड वर्क आई एम पुटिंग इन दिस वीडियोस इन टुडेस वीडियो आई एम गोना डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू जेरेंड पार्टिसिपल एंड इंफिनिटिव whether you are student of class 10th or 12th or you doing preparation for any central exam or any state exam in the grammar section questions based on gerund participle and infinitives are always asked so i assume by now you have already understood that these verbs are known as non finite verbs which we have already discussed in our previous video or if you are new to this channel let me tell you this is part 2 of our verb series where we are trying to understand all types of verbs and their usage in the sentences in case you have not seen the part 1 of the series i want you to watch that video up there or head to the description below for all details so that you can have a good command over this topic also make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification so that you know when each new lesson is ready for you All right, let's get started with this lesson. We know that non-finite verbs do not function as the main verb in the sentence. Instead, they work either as a noun or as an adjective or as an adverb in the sentence. To start with, here I'm putting some sentences on the screen. You need to identify the underlined word in these sentences. So, let's do this warm up before we get into the topic. Running is a good exercise. I have been shopping for new clothes. A rolling stone gathers snow moves. I want to swim in the pool. See these sentences one by one. Running is a good exercise. The underlined word is running. What part of speech is this? We call it a gerund. I have been shopping for new clothes. The underlined word is shopping. What part of speech is this? It's a verb. a present participle verb a rolling stone gathers snow moves rolling which word is this now this time it's a participle also it's a nice example a rolling stone gathers snow moves it's a person who does not settle in one place and that's why he never accumulates wealth or status or responsibilities so yeah a nice example next i want to swim in the pool Here to swim is the underlined word and it is an infinitive. All right then the purpose of doing this exercise was to check your level. If you are able to identify any of these words that means you are going good. And if you are a beginner you must be getting confused in that. In fact I have seen many students getting confused with these words and even after understanding it so many times and seeing so many youtube videos they are not able to identify these verbs in any sentence the only reason behind it what i can make out is that they never try to understand the formation of these words and their role in the sentence so no worries uh, here i suggest you to watch this video completely without skipping any part and believe me you won't regret it So let's start with the basics first. If you see a formation of a sentence, an assertive sentence always starts with a subject and then verb and then object. So this subject can be either a noun or a pronoun. See this example. Stuti is a bright child. In this sentence, stuti is a subject and it is a noun because it is a name of a person. See another example. Krish always gives his best effort. in the team again in this sentence krish is a subject which is a noun see this one he is a good leader here the subject is he and now this is a pronoun so a subject can be either a noun or a pronoun now what if i say that a verb is also used as a subject you will say it's a completely contradictory statement but it's true a verb is also used as a subject actually a non finite verb is also used as a subject which can be either a gerund or an infinitive but our first statement that is also not incorrect because we can't use these non finite verbs straight away as their base form instead first we'll change them into a noun and then we'll use them as a subject and this is what you need to understand 
So from here we derive the definition of gerund. Gerunds are words that are formed with verbs but act as nouns. That means they look like a present participle verb in form but works as a noun as I said. And how to recognize them? It's easy. Because every gerund is a verb with ing attached to its tail. That means there would be ing at the last of every gerund. Like learning, eating, singing, writing, they all are gerund in form. See this one. The gerund form of the verb read is reading. And how did we make it? By adding ing after the word read. You can use a gerund as a subject or as the complement of the subject or as the object of the sentence. We'll see this one by one with examples. Reading enhances our knowledge. Here the word reading is functioning as subject because it is coming in the starting of the statement also before the verb enhances. So here it is functioning as the subject of the sentence. See this one. Arjun's favorite hobby is reading. Here the word reading is not an object but it is a complement of the sentence. We also call them as complement of verb to be because they always come after the to be verbs like is, am, are, was, were. Did you get it? This reading is functioning as the complement of the statement. See the next one. Prabraj enjoys reading. Here the word reading is object. It is functioning as the object. How did you recognize that now? Because it is coming after the verb enjoys. So here you learn three main usage of gerund as a subject, as a complement and as an object of the statement. Now there is one more use of gerund which is using after the preposition. First see these examples. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We arrived at home after driving all night. Did you notice the word hearing and driving here? They both are gerund. The rule says that if you are using a preposition and after that you have to use an activity, you can't use the base form of verb. Like, I look forward to hear from you is a wrong statement. And I have seen many people using this wrong statement. Like they feel that it should be infinitive. I look forward to hear from you. But no, it has to be a gerund. Because it's coming after the preposition to. And the same rule goes for the next sentence. Now let's see what is an infinitive. An infinitive is the to form of the verb. That means an infinitive is made by using to before the verb. So the infinitive form of learn will be to learn. To walk, to run, to cry, to jump. All of these words are infinitives. So an infinitive will almost always begin with to. Now the interesting fact is infinitives can be used as noun, adjective or adverbs. Look at all these examples to understand this fact. Infinitive functioning as a noun. To sleep is the only thing Akriti wants. Here to sleep functions as the noun because it is the subject of the sentence. So when it comes in the starting of the sentence, it generally functions as a noun. Now see infinitive functioning as an adjective. Primiti has some clothes to wash. Here to wash is an infinitive which is functioning as an adjective. What does an adjective do? It modifies the noun, right? So let's see the role of each word in this sentence. Pramiti is the subject of the sentence. Has is the supporting verb. Clothes is the noun. And to wash is an adjective which is modifying the noun clothes. Let me put it differently. What does Pramiti has? Some clothes which are to be washed. So the quality of the clothes is that they are to be washed. Hence, the infinitive is working as an adjective. I hope it's clear to you. Alright, let's see the next example now wherein the infinitive will function as an adverb. Vedant goes to the park to play. Here, Vedant is the subject. Goes is the verb. And why does he go? To play. So, to play is an adverb for the verb goes. See, in this sentence, we have two adverbs. One adverb is why does he go to play and one is where does he go to park. 
and you should know that an adverb always answers how when where why or to what extent if you want to brush up your adverbs you can go to this video to clear all your doubts i advise you not to skip it because this is one of the important and interesting topics in grammar all right now comes my favorite topic participle so what is a participle it is not the main verb in the sentence and it functions as an adjective in the sentence that is to say in any sentence there will be two verbs one will be the main verb and the second will be the participle and yes this participle will not work as a verb it will work as an adjective so there are three kinds of participle in english present participle past participle and perfect participle let's see the formation of present participle all present participles end in ing and for that you simply add ing in the main verb so walk becomes walking eat becomes eating think becomes thinking and so on you remember the formation of a gerund that is also formed by adding ing in the verb so what is the difference a gerund is used as a noun and a participle is used as an adjective this is the difference that you need to remember let's see the examples he saw a sleeping tiger yesterday here the word saw is the main verb and sleeping is a participle which is an adjective for the noun tiger in the same way many other words also can define tiger like an attacking tiger a roaring tiger or a fighting tiger these all words are defining tiger so they all are used as a participle for the noun tiger see this one don't try to catch a running bus here the running is defining the bus so it's a participle and the main verb in the sentence is try don't try so these were the examples of present participle now let's see the examples for past participle past participle is formed by using third form of the verb and it functions as an adjective look at this broken glass here the main verb is look and broken is functioning as past participle because it is describing the glass how's the glass it's broken notice here it's in verb's third form which makes it past participle next example we should drink boiled water here the main verb is drink and boiled is working as a past participle form because it's describing the condition of the water that it is boiled i hope it's clear to you Let's move on to perfect participle now. A perfect participle indicates the complete action. It can be either in active form or in passive form. Let's see both the examples. In active form it is created as having plus verb's third form and in passive form it will be created as having been plus verb's third form. Having watched the movie I went to complete my homework. Here having watched the movie is indicating that one work is totally completed and now he is moving to do the next work. So having watched is functioning as a perfect participle here. See this one. Having finished our work we went to our home. Here having finished is functioning as perfect participle because it is indicating a completed task. See the example of perfect participle as passive form. Having been beaten he ran away. Here having been beaten is functioning as perfect participle and after the completion of this work he ran away. See the next one having been transferred i left the place. Again having been transferred is working as a perfect participle in passive form. So that's it for this class. I think I've given you enough information about this topic now and now this is your turn to assess yourself. As usual we'll solve this exercise now to recapitulate all the above rules we have just understood. For this you will have to identify the correct non-finite verb in the given sentences. Also keep identifying the main verb in these sentences so that you can easily differentiate both of them in any sentence. So let's get started. Sentence 1 I never gave writing enough of a chance. Writing is a non-finite verb here. It's a gerund because it's an activity. a noun and which is the main verb here gave correct next sentence ashutosh went to buy the tickets here to buy is an infinitive i hope it's easy for you to find it out and which is the main verb went next pratishtha is a leading singer 
In this sentence, leading is a non-finite verb. Now you tell me which non-finite verb is this? It's a participle because it is defining the noun singer. Next, succeeding is not enough. Others must fail. Here the word succeeding is a gerund. Next, Yuvanshi does not like to cry in public. Find out the non-finite verb here. It's to cry, which is an infinitive. Next, a broken heart will mend over time. This one is interesting. Find out the non-finite verb here. It's broken, which is defining the noun heart. And which is the main verb here? Mend. Next, I believe that laughing is the best calorie burner. Here, laughing is a gerund because it is an activity. And the main verb here is believe. A burnt child dreads fire. Again, the word burnt is past participle here which is defining the noun child. Alright guys, you did great. Now you have mastered one more topic in English grammar. And if you really think you've learned something new today, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to comment in the comment section. I'll be back again with a new video on a different topic. Till then, bye-bye, take care and happy learning.